Hi, welcome to this very quick tour of the Colvars dashboard in VMD. So I have here a trajectory with a ligand unbinding from a protein. And I'm going to go to extensions, analysis, Colvars dashboard, and open the Colvars dashboard interface. This is where the Colvars are going to go. And to create them, I start with automatic Colvars. Uh, and these are just a set of predefined protein descriptors like RMSD and radius of gyration. And the values are here, and if I animate the trajectory, you can see that the values are updated in real time. They're recomputed for every frame in the trajectory. So now uh, these are nice for generic descriptors, but what if I want descriptors of the ligand unbinding itself? I'm going to press 2 to create a bond label in VMD. I click on these two atoms, so now I have a distance between two atoms from the ligand and the protein, and then I press 4, and I can label a dihedral angle. Now these VMD labels can be converted to Colvars by pressing this Colvars from VMD labels button. Now I have two extra collective variables. Uh, there are the bond and the dihedral angle. I can delete the VMD labels that I don't need anymore. And um, these names are a bit cumbersome, so I'm going to change them. I double click on the name. This opens the Colvar config string. I can change the name, control S to apply, and then dihedral, same thing, change the name, control S. Now, timeline plot will show me what I expect. And, you know, the time evolution of the variable and this blue cursor tells me where I am in the trajectory. And if I click in the plot and navigate using the keyboard, I can also navigate the Colvar graph and that takes me to the right place in the molecular trajectory. If I click two variables, I can have a timeline for two variables at the same time and here looks like there might be a correlation between them so for that i click pairwise plot i get this scatter plot of the dihedral versus the distance which lets me uh, inspect the correlation between these two and places where for example the dihedral changes but the distance doesn't change so there is a confirmation change of the ligand within the binding pocket and i can switch between those just by clicking on these points so now a different plot that can do is a histogram plot. I can do it for the dihedral variable, which shows me that there is you know, a number of discrete confirmations for this ligand, and that um, I can explore them by clicking on different modes in the histogram, which again takes me to the uh, relevant frames in this trajectory. I can also use the keyboard to explore this. Now, mm, Right now, these variables are a bit crude. This is defined based on just two atoms. So let me use instead atoms from the ligand as used in the representation. And here for the protein, I'm going to use all alpha carbons, which I can select using these uh, simple VMD selections. Now I can check the atoms by clicking on show atoms. And here, these little you know balls of two colors show me the atom groups I'm using. And this shows me that the four atoms for the dihedral are the ones I wanted to use. So this is good for troubleshooting definitions of, of variables. Now let me create a variant of the distance. Instead of the distance, say I want to look at the coordination number between the ligand and the protein. So I'm going to rename this and replace the distance keyword with num, which uses the same type of atom group. So I can double check again the atoms that are used are the same as the distance, but now you see the, the quantity is different. It's a coordination number, so it goes to zero when the distance goes up as the coordination disappears and they're nicely negatively correlated. So I can also inspect the gradients of this coordination number and that tells me exactly how it depends on the position of individual atoms. So I can see that it only really depends on the position of atoms that are currently in contact. So that's a good analysis of uh, what atoms are important for the coordinate at a given point in time. I can also using VMD change the atomic coordinates. Here I'm just moving the ligand around using my mouse and pressing F5 to update the values and the gradients. So I can see how the Colvars depend on atomic coordinates. Now let's add a biasing potential to this coordination number. Say I want to force it to have a high coordination number to keep it bound. I'm going to use 20 as the reference value. And in this biases tab, I can see the energy of the bias, the energy that would be calculated if this were an actual simulation. And the timeline if this were a trajectory where the bias is applied, which is not the case yet. 
I can also display the biasing forces, which are proportional to the gradient of the coordinate. And then um, once I'm satisfied that the physics of this bias is the one I want, I can just uh, take this configuration and save it to a new file. And that file, uh, I can just load directly in an MD simulation to run a simulation with the corresponding biases. Thanks for watching.